Clarence Leonard Kelly Johnson was born on the 27th of February 1910, just seven years after the world's first flight by heavier than air aircraft which had taken place at Kitty Hawk in North Carolina. The Wright brothers had proven on the 8th of October 1902 that design, experimentation and intuition could achieve something that was thought impossible. 1910 was the year in which Harry Houdini achieved the first powered flight in Australia. This year was also the first flights of the aircraft such as the short S-27, Row 2 triplane and the Bristol box kite. These were early days. It was another three years before a pilot achieved a loop in an aircraft. In the 80 years that Kelly Johnson lived, aviation went from cloth and wood to titanium and aluminium, from the Bristol box kite to the SR-71 Blackbird. Kelly grew up in Michigan, born of Swedish parents. He was just 13 when he received a prize for designing an aircraft. He received his bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering at the University of Michigan, but after being turned down by Lockheed as having no experience, went back to get his master's. His professor, Edward Stalker, disagreed with Kelly's view that the Lockheed Model 10 airliner lacked directional stability. When Kelly joined Lockheed as a tool designer, he convinced Hal Hibbard, the chief designer, that their Model 10 needed a rethink. Hal sent Kelly back to do more wind tunnel tests. Kelly's changes included a H-tail and they were accepted and this model went on to success. This brought Kelly to the attention of Lockheed management. His legendary reputation as a designer really took off in 1943 when Germany introduced the Messerschmitt 262 jet fighter and the US War Department commissioned Lockheed, meaning Kelly, to develop a fighter to fly 100 miles per hour faster than the P-38 and be combat ready in 180 days. This was to become the P-80 shooting star and this was accomplished 38 days ahead of schedule. Ben Rich worked alongside Kelly and said of him that he was relentless, had a chili pepper temperament, poison to any bureaucrat, disaster to ask coverers, excuse makers or fault finders. To me, he sounded a lot like Steve Jobs of Apple and Pixar fame. In other words, difficult in the extreme, but brilliantly creative. The moniker Skunk Works came to be applied to Kelly's division because Kelly had rented a big circus tent next to an oxious plastics factory that stunk. Kelly lived by 14 rules at Lockheed and being a minimalist thought a small number of highly talented people rewarded for performance and unhampered by conformity was desirable. He used 10 to 25% of the numbers of people ordinarily required for the work to be done. His designs and contributions list includes 40 aircraft and he was awarded 52 medals, awards and memberships during his career. He was said to have an instinctive feel for an aircraft's design and was an excellent organizer. His autobiography is Kelly, more than my share of it all. This remarkable man spanned the era of cottonwood aircraft to spacecraft.